In this lesson, we will be modeling data with a periodic function. And whenever we model data with a periodic function, there's no specific test that we use. If you remember back with linear data, we tested to see if it had a constant average rate of change. With exponential data, we checked to see if the ratios were constant. Uh, instead, with periodic data, we just look at the data to see does it have a repetitive pattern. Does it sort of uh, oscillate? Does it go up and down between a maximum and a minimum value? If you remember, a periodic model has the form A times the sine of the quantity B times the quantity X minus C, close the quantities, plus D. And if you remember, A was the amplitude, which told us how high or how tall the graph was. B was related to the period, so that represented how wide it was. C was a horizontal shift, so it moved it left and right. And D was the median, which was kind of the middle value of the data. It also represented uh, a vertical shift. Uh, so let's look at an example. We have some population based on the generation. And say we start with an initial gener with our initial generation having a population of 410. Uh, after that first generation, it actually decreased down to 177. But then for the next few generations, it increases all the way up to the fifth generation where there's 1,123. But again, it decreases until the eighth generation where there's 177. It again increases until the twelfth generation where it again has 1,123. And we see in the thirteenth generation, it's going to start to decrease again. So we see this pattern where it goes from 177 up to 1,123, and then back to 177, and then back up to 1,123. And so we're starting to see this repetitive pattern. The numbers aren't all the same, and they don't have to be. But we're still seeing this oscillation, this going up and back down. So in order to find a function for this data, uh, the first thing we need to do is determine the period. And once we know the period, we can find B. Well, the easiest way to find the period is looking at the distance between two maximums or you could do it with two minimums. And we looked at earlier, the first maximum occurred in the fifth generation, and the second maximum occurred in the twelfth generation. So 12 minus 5 gives us a period of seven generations. And in order to compute B, we know B was 360 divided by the period, so that would be 360 divided by 7, which gives us about 51.43. And again, we could have done the, all the same thing by computing the, the period using the minimums. Uh, the minimum was in the first generation and in the eighth generation. So from the one to eight is a distance or difference of seven generations. Once we have the period and we found B, we can then move on to find the median, which was D, and the amplitude A. And both of these are are related to each other by the maximum and the minimum values. Uh, so if we look at the data, the minimum value was 177 and the maximum value was 1123. To find the amplitude, we take the difference between the maximum and minimum and divide it by 2. So in this case that would be 1123 divided by 177, divide that by 2, and that gives us 473. So that's our amplitude. The median is the average of the minimum and the maximum. So it's the max plus the min divided by 2. That would be 1,123 plus 177. Divide that by 2, and that gives us a median value of 650. And the last thing we need to do is figure out the horizontal shift, and this is usually the hardest part to figure out. Uh, in order to figure out this value of C, we need to look at where the data is going to pass through the median the first time and while it's increasing. Uh, so if we remember, we, we'd already said that the median was 650. So I need to look through the data and find out where is the data going to pass 650. And the 650 doesn't even need to be one of the data values. It just has to be where the data would 
pass through it. So if we could fill in all the gaps where the 650 would be. If we start in the initial generation, there's 410, and it decreases for that first generation. But then it starts to increase. It increases from the first through the fifth generation, from 177 up to 1,123, which means as it increases, it has to pass through 650. And that happened in the third generation. So the value of C is going to be 3. Now this time is pretty easy because that 650 was actually one of the data values, but that's not always going to be the case. So for example, say instead of 650, say the median had been just 400. The 400 is not an actual value in the data. So if we look at where the first time you're going to see 400, while the data is increasing, we have in the second generation, there's 282, and in the third generation, there's 650. So somewhere between 282 and 650, it's going to pass through 400. And so that would be somewhere between the second and the third generation. And we're just going to make a guess or an estimate here and say that it's going to be somewhere between 2 and 3, which is 2 and a half. So if the median had been, say, 400, I would have said C just would have been 2 and a half. So we're just going to have to make a kind of an educated guess at that point. Once we have our four constants, we can go ahead and write what our function looks like. Now if we remember again what our formula is, it's going to be A, which is the amplitude, times B, times X minus C, and then plus D. The A is the amplitude, which is 473. B was related to the period, and we got it to be 51.43. C was the horizontal shift, which we just looked at and said was 3. And D was the median, which we looked at before and said was 650. So if we put all that together, we get that the population as a function of the generation is equal to 473 times sine of 51.43 times the quantity G minus 3 plus 650.